There are successful working professionals who are also managing serious mental health issues, and more and more of them are willing to speak publicly about their experiences. Joining us now to discuss is WSJ Health and Science Senior Editor Melinda Beck and Donna Hardacre, Wellness Works Director. Welcome, ladies, to both of you. Melinda, let me start with you. What sorts of mental health issues are we talking about here? Uh, in this case, we're talking about bipolar disorder, uh, severe depression, in some cases even schizophrenia. This is uh, uh, afflicts maybe one in 17 Americans, um, far less often than the more general uh, kinds of mental health things that one quarter of Americans struggle with. Right. And, and Donna, thank you so much for joining us. Can you tell us about your own experiences? Sure. Um, I was diagnosed with uh, severe depression after a, a quite a lengthy period of uh, dysfunction when I was very unwell. I was continuing to work but um, no longer at full capacity with um, a great deal of change in my behavior. And when that happened to me, I was in a workplace that was unable to um, be supportive. We had no way of talking about these issues. So what um, we are doing now is really pushing forward to have professionals like me talk about our experiences so that we are able to break through the stigma, discrimination, uh, social prejudice that is associated with mental health issues and instead bring a perspective that uh, we who have these kinds of disorders can be and are very productive, um, valuable employees. So, Melinda, the Americans with Disability Act, doesn't that also outlaw any sort of discrimination in the workplace, but yet the stigma still exists? Uh, yes, it does. And, and it's partly because, as Donna said, um, it's very hard for workplaces to even know how to deal effectively mm -hmm. with, with mental health issues. It's much easier to see somebody who's on crutches and say, oh, how can, how can I help you? Right. And people have mental actually Mental health been... issues, though, are included uh, in the Americans yes, with Disabilities Act, are. correct? Yes. Okay. Just Confirming yes, that. Um, and and technically that means that employers cannot discriminate mm -hmm. against people who have those, but there are a lot of complications sure. within that that simple word. So, Donna, what advice do you have for others? Uh, should you mention your mental health issues in an interview? Does anyone need to know your boss, you know, um, hu human resources, or do you need to tell anyone about it? Well, it's a complex question that you're asking. Um, and so uh, while it is a very good idea for employees to be aware if they can request accommodation, that's a good idea to know about that. It's a different question about how much information you share about what's happening for you. And that's because we are still in early stages of having it be safe for people to be able to share this kind of information in the workplace. So um, what generally what is recommended is that people do not disclose the actual diagnosis that they have, that they um, hold on to the information that is happening about them regarding their mental health issue until they know in this workplace, are, are people equipped to be able to have effective conversations with employees who are struggling? Mm -hmm. How does the culture in this workplace um, talk about people who have mental health issues? Um, are derogatory terms used? Are there a lot of jokes about um, mental illness and addiction? Um, uh, are, what are the stories inside the organization about people who have had previous mental health conditions? So are they, uh, is it only regarded as a problem and that these are terrible people who should be avoided? So that's what a, a, an employee would need to be aware of before they consider how to share this information, if that's what they are going to do. And, and Melinda, did you speak to employers, either on the record or off the record, about how they feel about hiring um, people with mental health? Well, this is there's a whole range of both of disabilities and mm -hmm. people and employers. Of course, and of course. What, what the story in in, um, in the paper tomorrow features is is the Stability Network, which is a new group that's just formed in <laughs> Seattle, um, encouraging professionals like Donna um, and others that we profile to, to come forward and tell their stories and we tell the story of, of four of those professionals and we talk to each of their employers and as you can imagine um, 
These are all very successful people who have managed to keep their disabilities under tight control through a lot of discipline. And that's partly why they're speaking out and have come together in the stability network. But each one of their employers has said it didn't make any difference. Um, right. Catherine right. or Donna was such a valuable employee that we really wanted to have them. And, you know, Everybody's got something wrong, mm -hmm. including myself. And the more people can, can talk about this openly and p provide examples of how effective and, and successful people can be while still dealing with a, uh, an issue like this, then it, the more the stigma will disappear. Absolutely. And Donna, quickly before we go, are you happy with the progress being made? Yes, absolutely. Wonderful. Yes. Melinda Beck, Donna Hardacre, thanks to both of you for being with us today.